Alright, good morning. So you found my channel on how to adjust this uh, tremolo bridge. Uh, here we go. First things first, um, let's assume that you have put new strings on, you have uh, brought this up to pitch, and the first thing you're going to want to do is we're going to do what's called, we're going to want to look at what's called the neck relief, okay? The neck relief is defined as, uh, I usually pick uh, one fret beyond where it meets the body. So if the, if you look here, if the, if the guitar neck meets the body and happens to be this fret here, I'll go one more and I push on it there. Now actually, if you want to make your life easy, you could put a capo right here, okay? And you hold this down. But honestly, if you could just put your, your pinky here, you put your first finger here. What you want to do relief is I go to the 12th fret and I want to look to see the space between the string and the 12th fret. So if I'm holding that down, right now I've got about what's called a business card distance. And uh, I'm, I'm usually looking for 0.010 to 0.015. Uh, it depends on, uh, and I'll use a feeler gauge. You just hold this down, and now with this, with this hand you could put a feeler gauge at the 12th fret. And you can really make this, you can make this distance anything you want. What you want to look out for is the opposite. If the string is touching here, that means the neck is either too flat and there's no relief, or it's got a back bow. So if you have to make a string adjustment, uh, it's, it's, it's pretty easy, especially on guitars with a locking nut. And I'm assuming that this video I'm talking about guitars with locking, uh, a locking nut. So what you do is pop the cover off. And when you go to make a neck adjustment, in this case, you're going to want to loosen it. So if you've got the guitar straight up and down, right, and you've got your uh, tool, you're going to go counterclockwise as you're looking straight down. So righty tighty, lefty loosey, it's the same thing here. And when I say you're going to make a neck adjustment if it's too tight, if you can see the uh, Allen key, I would maybe turn it a quarter turn, right? That's a quarter turn. This would be a full, that's a full turn, that's a quarter turn. And I would start with a quarter turn. Now, here's the tricky part. You never want to make adjustments to the neck with full string tension. But the good news is, with a locking mechanism guitar or a locking nut, what you can do is, is depress all the strings so you've got no string tension, and you can make your quarter turn adjustment and then bring it back up. All right, so that's the first thing, first step one. Next step, with a tremolo guitar, what you have to make sure before you do anything else, bridge is planed. What I mean by planed is, you don't want the bridge to be sitting back like this, right? Where it's, if you can get to see, where it's, you can see it's, it's pulling the strings towards the neck. And you don't want it the other way, which is tilting forward. Uh, how you would make this adjustment, and I'll let me grab this guitar here. So all your tremolo bridges, I don't care what style, if it's hip shot, Floyd Rose, or in this case, the Ibanez Edge. This claw, what you'll want to do is, you're going to want to tighten and loosen by using a simple Phillips head. And I'm going to say you probably want to go maybe again another quarter turn, half turn, either way. If you're at pitch and the bridge is pulling back, that means the, string, the spring tension is greater than the string tension. So what you'd have to do is loosen the springs. Loosen the top and bottom, quarter turn, and then you'll have to retune. Once you retune, if it brings it right back to level, then you're all set. If this is pitching forward, that means your strings are out pulling the springs. So then you'll have to tight you'll have to tighten the springs. And you keep going back and forth until you've got this bridge. So this is love this is flat, right? And it's it's tough to see. And on this bridge especially because it's got that this feature here, it happens to be at an angle. Uh, so again, let's use my other this one this Floyd Rose has got a flat. You can see it, it it's it's flat right here. So as you can see, that's dead flat. Next step is you want to set the string height. And that is going to be based on two things. One, uh, feel, and two, how low can you go before you get fret buzz? And so you may have to go through, you know, each, each fret, try to bend them. And to me, it's a compromise between feel and um, getting any string buzz. I, in this, on this guitar, I actually like the action a little bit higher than where I could set it. 
And uh, so it's a back and forth thing. Now, I know that there's uh, some conjecture on the internet about you've got the fulcrum points here and that some of these bridges may not be uh, the hardened steel at the knife edge. Uh, if you go to uh, make some up and down moves with the your hex key in here and you're trying to turn it up and down, it's advisable to take all the string tension off. So sometimes you got to go backwards, which is to, now you got to undo this, take all the string tension off, make an adjustment, tighten, you know, put the string tension back on and then tighten it down. Um, or you can just do what I did here, which is I'm just going to trust that these are hardened and what you're going to want to do is make again very small movements in most cases you're probably going to want to try to see how far down you can go so what you can do is turn these in maybe a half you know quarter turn half turn and then check usually for me it's right in this range when i run into a problem on this guitar it's right in here where it shows up and I'll have to bend the strings sometimes too, because maybe maybe here it, it might be fine, but as you bend, it might bottom out someplace in here. On this guitar, I chose the string action to be a little higher than where I could go with it. Uh, I think it sounds really good where it's at now. Uh, string relief, uh, bridges plane, string height. Now, and this is why I said put brand new strings on, is you want to set the intonation. So the intonation, and it's really not hard to do this. I, I, I don't know why there's, I meet a lot of guitar players that are just afraid to touch their bridge. And it's real simple. On this guitar, the point at which it contacts the bridge is right here. The end point is here. The midpoint is here. The scaling doesn't matter. You just go to the midpoint, right? And what you'll do in this case is hit the harmonic, press down, and they should be the same note. You can plug your guitar in, have it set up to a, you know your uh, tuner, and hit an open string, and then fret it, and fret it lightly. Watch, if, your, if, if the fretted pitch is lower than the harmonic, that means the string length needs to shorten, which increases the pitch. You'll find the cap screw here, loosen it, let the string, and you can grab the back part of here, so you don't need that fancy tool. I, I have one and never use it. Loosen it, slide it forward, tighten it, repeat and you'll find after a few few times of doing that you'll you'll dial it right in the bad news is if you have to actually pull it back further so in this case if I hit the harmonic and I press and it's sharp that means the string needs to be longer you know you may have to undo your locking nut so I, I prefer to leave just like a normal tuned guitar windings so that if I need to make intonation adjustments, I have plenty to work with. And the logic behind it is, there's no sense in doing intonation if you haven't fixed your string height. Because at, if, if your string height's too high, as you press down, that's going to make your intonation uh, not very accurate. So thanks for stopping by, and uh, hope you guys have a great day.